Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> happy cool. <laughs> Cool thing to be on a farm on Thanksgiving. And welcome to Welcome to Road Homestead. <laughs> yes. Especially since we get to cook our own turkey. Whoa! Yes. It's turkey. To... We are having our first turkey grown on the homestead today. Well, not our first turkey grown. Oh, it's our first Thanksgiving first turkey First Thanksgiving grown. turkey. It's our first time um, hatching and growing out our first Thanksgiving turkey. How exciting. Yeah. Last year, on this very day, I think you released a little short of us sitting in front of the young Caleb's Narragansetts, mm -hmm. and we said this will be the last time we eat a, home, a store bought turkey on Thanksgiving. Yeah. And here we are. Well done. We have <laughs> Mr. Turkey Man himself here. Officially arrived as far as the turkey dream. <laughs> of, We're living the turkey of dream. Raising <laughs> the Thanksgiving turkey. I've wanted to do uh, that for the past several years. Oh my gosh, it's kind of been a life goal, like one of those bucket list things. It has been, yeah. and he is. He's a beautiful turkey. We'll make sure that you guys get plenty of uh, footage of that. But hey, um, so everyone knows you raise these turkeys and put your, heart, put your heart and soul. How do you feel about Thanksgiving, the turkey being our Thanksgiving dinner? Wow. You know? You know how kind of sad. Kind of sad. Well, he he does put his heart and soul. And Nathan, by the time we're done, like with the pigs and we're sending them to slaughter. He's done with them. Like, there's no <laughs> love lost. He's like, yeah, that pig can go away and we'll enjoy his meat. No worries. Caleb's like, he still holds them and pets them and loves them. And then he doesn't take part in the slaughter, right? You so were, you last were kind time of I there. helped. You did help us last time, huh? So, good job. But that was the first time. You can kind of separate it because you have pet turkeys and you got your meat, so. the your grow meat, turkeys. meat turkeys. Meat, yeah. meat animals. Yeah. Meat birds. The turkey we processed a couple days ago was uh, 21 pounds live weight, dressed out to about 16 and a half pounds. So I'm pretty happy. Yeah. Are you talking about Thanksgiving or the one in the freezer? I'm talking about yeah. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving we turkey. ate the one in the freezer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which is kind of a cool thing to be able to say. <laughs> Raising your own things on the farm, put all the inputs, know what exactly what it ate, and something to be thankful for. <laughs> now, that aside, it is a holiday, yes, but we live on a farm. Yes. So, <laughs> the work doesn't stop. <laughs> Early this morning, before the sun rose, I was getting up and getting my rifle and going deer hunting, That's which is also cool. <laughs> and then we came back for chores. <laughs> <laughs> right now we are working on a project because David has the day off of work. Hello. And it is a beautiful sunny day today. It was it was seriously it's been dreary a couple days in a row. Yes, it was very drab and dreary for the past two days. So very wet. we are working on getting a winter sheep shelter for our flock of sheep set up. Because they need something that's going to be weatherproof when the weather starts getting really nasty. Like yep. we've we've only had barely a taste of it so far, but we know it's going to get colder and it's going to get wetter. So we need a place for them to stay dry, and we also need a place for their food to stay dry because we are pretty pretty much out of grazing for them in their pen. We can do As some winter comes, shifting. The grass dies, so. Yeah, we can do some shifting of their fences to give them a little bit more grazing for a little bit longer, but it's just not going to be growing back and instead of trying to continue rotating them on grass that has little nutritional value that's not going to grow back, we're just going to go ahead and make them a little bit more stationary, give them hay, and have a nice uh, weatherproof shelter for them for the winter. Yeah, use some of the hay that we grew right here. Yep. Works out. And putting them too far out is miserable because we have to go out and feed the dog twice a day. So, hey. <laughs> so we're going to head out there right now take you along, let you see where the plan is. Now, the area that we're actually doing this in is the garden. It's where we had our tomatoes and our climbing beans, and we were kind of repurposing some of that, uh, <laughs> yeah, noodle beans. We are repurposing some of that cattle panel uh, lattice that we built uh, to be the sheep shelter. So it's two 32 foot sections of- Because sheep poop is awesome. Yeah, and then they're <laughs> gonna poop all over it and it'd be great <laughs> for the garden. So yeah. Natural Let's go. fertilizer. You ready? Yep. All right.
garden spaces actually uh, our tomato trellises out here we have decided that we were going to just make those into part of our sheep shelter structure uh, so what they're doing right now is that they are making it a slight angle so that when it does rain the water will drain down the back of it uh, it's actually going to be kind of a glorified tent um, we're going to put tarps on it uh, angled so that they'll drain and they're going to be staked down really tight so that they shouldn't blow up in the wind uh, and the wind generally comes from behind the camera now so it comes toward this area and it's going to be the back of it sloping up it should do really well it shouldn't pick up in the wind uh, we're really feeling good about this idea this con uh, this concept if it fails then we'll let you know <laughs> um, so basically we've got there are four rows of trellises but we're only going to be using three uh, we're going to have the two uh, like rows here uh, or lanes that you might call them where we're gonna have shelter on one side and the other side is gonna be hay uh, so we're gonna be basically creating this structure that has hay storage for the sheep so we don't have to be moving hay in and out we don't have to make it tall enough to fit the tractor under it so it's gonna keep the hay dry while not having to make us have to reinvent the wheel every time they need a bale of hay so the basic idea is that because we have the separation between the lanes uh, it will limit the sheep's access to the hay to whatever we want to give them access to so we'll use a combination of the existing fencing as well as some uh, welded wire probably to create uh, smaller openings so they can't reach their head in to access what we don't want and just give them access to one bale at a time throughout the season and we're really optimistic we hope it works uh, but this is going to be our first winter with sheep and um, they're generally fairly hardy animals they shouldn't be too difficult and honestly we're going to be out here every day twice a day because they do have an lgd with them and he does eat every day twice a day so having the uh the ability to check on them often will help us to make any changes that we need to. Uh, they're not going to be just a set it and forget it kind of thing. That is our primary plan for the breeding flock. We've got our ewes and our ram. Uh, yes, we have a ram. Um, and we also have our three remaining feeder lambs that we haven't processed yet. Thing to say, fact about him, he is brown. Yes, he is a dark ram. We'll get, we'll, we'll show you guys. But uh, we do have three ewe lambs that were not uh, old enough or large enough to be bred this season. So they are being housed separately. They are currently in a separate pen that's like a short distance but not far from the, the breeding group. They will overwinter with the goats. Uh, so they'll have access to a barn, they'll have access to hay, and they'll have protection from a dog, but they won't be... Uh, in with the ram because we don't want the ram breeding them. Hello, sheepy sheep. So this is Rachel, Leah, Naomi is our newest you. Esther. That's our ram, Abel. <laughs> That's Sean the sheep. AKA a sheep rubbing on a stick. And then I can't tell from this distance, but those two are Mikey and Francis. So. Oh, Sean. <laughs> Just knocked the whole stick out of the ground. Hi, hey, buddy. Hi there, Mr. Abel.
recycling our old fencing and protecting the hay from them consuming it too quickly, basically. I will return with her. Pretty well. Oh dear. It appears the game has found a rodent burrow. Did you find something's home? Can I give you the grand tour? Come with me. <laughs> so if you were a sheep, you were looking for a place to winter. Mm -hmm. Winterize. We have a nice roomy two bedroom here. Open floor plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's enough for eight sheep. I'm pretty, pretty happy with this, this is awesome. Ooh, it's warm in here. Hay bales are set back enough that they can't put their heads through. We've got a double layer of fencing, so they also can't put their heads through to eat all the bales that we don't need access to. And really, got, they might munch on it. Who knows? We've got one on the end here that when we rearrange their fencing, they'll have access to this one. We'll put two by four weld of wire fencing on it so that they can't just spread it out, throw it everywhere. So we got this thing all built. We're probably not gonna give the sheep access to it today just because that's gonna be a whole nother project to rearrange their fencing so that they have access to it. And that's just gonna be a project that I have to do another time because I have to go and- Cook a turkey for me. Prep a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Very excited about this turkey. Worked up an appetite. Yes. Um, we just got a call from Amanda's Aunt Leanne. We did. And uh, we were taking a break eating chili dogs, chili hot dogs. <laughs> she goes, are you sitting down to a nice Thanksgiving dinner? We're like, no, we're eating chili dogs in a field. Uh, this is farm life now. <laughs> yep, <laughs> yep. Because farm work doesn't stop just because it's a holiday. Well, I mean, it could have. We could have been relaxing inside, but, but this look at is how, way better. <laughs> okay, with how the weather has been this week, this was a perfect day to get something done. Agreed. And you were home to do it, or help And we were with all it. driven and available, so it worked out. Yeah, so. Something to be thankful Rather than sitting around, milling around, doing nothing and snacking all day, we got a project done. And now we can go mill around and snack. We can go snack. mill around, snack, and watch football, and do the I want a snack. Want a snack? <laughs> Mama made some cheese. I'm gonna get in on that. Yeah. All right, let's go see that turkey. Here is our beautiful heritage turkey. He actually was a crossbreed. He was a Narragansett cross with a uh, broad breasted bronze turkey. And he turned out absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I'm really, really happy. I'm so excited. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is we roast our turkey for Thanksgiving. And I have a little thing that I like to do that has been pretty successful the past few times that I have made turkeys, and that is that I make an herb butter, 
and rub it under the skin as well as on top of the skin because I mean that skin is gonna keep some of your flavor from penetrating obviously yes if it's just on the skin some of that flavor will penetrate by getting it under the skin directly on the meat you're gonna get more of that flavor penetration more seasoning and I've actually had some really juicy turkeys come out of it they do not dry out the herbs that I'm making today are from our front yard we've got thyme we have lemon thyme and oregano now we did have to buy rosemary because for some reason we cannot keep a rosemary plant alive we're still troubleshooting it we're still working on it uh, but for now that means that we just had to buy a couple sprigs of rosemary so that I had fresh rosemary we have dried fresh is better So our turkey has now been covered in herb butter. He's gonna go in the oven. Now things to note with heritage breed turkeys is that they do not take as much time as your standard butterball commercial breed turkey. These guys you wanna cook for about 10 minutes per pound versus 15 to 20 minutes a pound for the store-bought birds. The reason for that being that they are going to be a slightly leaner bird, the breast is not as large, so you don't need that heat to penetrate as deep to cook it all the way through. So you want to do a little bit less time so you don't dry out your turkey. So we're going to get this guy in the oven and we'll come back when he comes out and you can see how gorgeous he is. Yay! <laughs> It's almost turkey time. I'm literally getting ready to just cut this thing up and I'm really excited, honestly, because it, I mean, let's be honest, Thanksgiving can be kind of stressful when you just have a bunch of people come over and cook and we're combining a bunch of chores on the farm and finally we're getting ready. It's like seven o'clock and we're finally sitting down for dinner that I've been hearing about how good it is all day long from my friends. It's kind of a trip. It's, it, I don't know, this is awesome. I'm excited. We're gonna cut into this and see how it is. It's been juicy, I know, because I use a lot of juices for the gravy already. And um, yeah, I'm right. Amanda, you gotta see this, come here. Oh yeah, the juices pour out. Good times. All that buttery crunchiness into the skin, look at that. Oh yeah. I, don't, I feel like I should give this to you to eat. To me? Oh my, thank you. Yeah. This, this is gonna be a delectable bird. Thank you so much for joining us on this Thanksgiving day. Yay. We are so excited we got our sheep project done in really good time. And uh, now we're sitting down to our wonderful Thanksgiving dinner. We are so thankful to have our wonderful viewers who have stuck with us through these awkward breaks. <laughs> and, uh, uh, thankful for each other and all the work that we've been putting into this farm. We wish all of you guys a very happy Thanksgiving. As always, this is your country nerd with a goat herd saying that you can grow where you're planted. planted.